What the fuck? What's going on? The the camera just jumped for some reason. Um, I'm gonna call Sergeant Dugan <coughs> at um, Public Affairs. And talk to him about them two old ladies that they pushed down and, 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 and pepper sprayed. Uh, Sergeant Dugan and, and Public Affairs, please. Hi, Sergeant Who? May. Hi, Sergeant May. Uh, this is uh, Thomas Wasserberg. I'm better known as Tommy Tudor. Um, I spoke with Sergeant Dugan right after it happened, like the day after um, the ruckus over uh, the Immigration Day thing. Okay. Um, is, he, is he in, or can I get you to comment? What is it that you need? Um, a number of people in the community we're watching that together at Facebook and have concluded that two officers need to be like um, disciplined for uh, their actions against the two old women. The one that was uh, uh, knocked down uh, and then the one that was pepper sprayed when she went to help her. Uh, they want a statement from the department uh, either justifying that action or uh, telling us how you're disciplining those officers, please. Sure. Um, he's already released some information about that and talking about it. You look at our, our Facebook page. Uh huh. He talks about the investigation process. Anytime there's a large incident like that, there's, there's always investigations that happen with that. Right. So it, it's part of the process. So if you go to that page, it'll, it'll kind of explain where things are at. The, and, and those I see. So th that those those two officers are under investigation for their action. I, I won't say specifically on any of that, but if you go to that page, it says it will. The whole entire incident is under review. Uh huh. Um, and at the conclusion of that, the department will put out um, a final report on the incident. Uh huh. Um, and then the investigation will continue. Okay. Um, so that's that's what we're doing right now. Uh, is there an estimate on when Matt will be ready? Uh, I, I don't know. We, we don't actually work those investigations in our office. It's handled through our office of uh huh. Um, and as you can imagine, they had a lot of witnesses and different things and video and stuff like that. So, as soon as um, they completed their investigation, uh, that will be made public. Great. Um, my concern is that, like, you know, departments will sometimes uh, not publish the uh, results of the investigation for many months, and everybody's forgotten. Okay, great. Okay. Thanks for your time. Happy You're day. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye-bye. All righty. Bear at least investigating it. Um, I probably, let me go and see what I can find on their page of Facebook that she referred to. Let's see if there's a search page function here. Because I'm sure there's other shit.
and there's not. Well, here's a message from the chief. February 16th protest. I think that was the day, wasn't it? Police response review. And this is from the chief. Dear Tucson residents, the Tucson Police Department has interacted extensively with members of the public engaged in protests, demonstrations, marches, and rallies related to a range of issues leading up to, as well as following the election. Even when some of these events involved large numbers of people, or when the issues involved were quite controversial, the overwhelming feedback we received regarding our approach to these gatherings and about the conduct of our officers has been very positive. One reason for this has been our ongoing efforts to establish dialogue with the organizers of these demonstrations in advance of the events and plan with them to assure everyone's safety while protecting First Amendment rights. And I gotta give it to the, you know, I've been giving it to the Tucson police uh, for their uh, tactics at, at, these, at these demonstrations and gatherings. Um, you don't see the riot squad anywhere. The, the guys out uh, in the crowd are mostly uh, brass and Pudgy beat cops, um, and uh, they aren't wearing heavy armor. Um, they're just chatting up the crowd. Usually, uh, the riot the riot squads only brought out when there's a disturbance, and and they usually put it right down. I hardly I've never before this event. This was the first time I've seen them use excessive force. Um, and as you heard, uh, the community opinion is that the, the cop that knocked the old lady down. And that sprayed her friend. The other one that sprayed her friend need to be disciplined. Um, you know, I don't know if they should lose their badges or could do any jail time, but they need to be disciplined. Uh, the manner in which our officers have handled events is diverse as the Trump, Clinton, and Sanders campaign rallies. And I was at the, the, the Trump and the Sanders rally. Um, the Black Lives Matter protests, I missed that one. Not my president march, I caught that. The women's march, I caught. And many other demonstrations have largely elicited praise and positive feedback, despite challenging circumstances. Many of these protests occurred in and around the downtown area, where officers from the department's downtown district took a lead role in working with event organizers and interacting with those who participated in the various marches and gatherings. And again, to Lieutenant Doggett, who's like the chief of that crew. I mention this because the very same crew, group of officers has been present for what have been recent, what has recently been weekly protests in front of the federal building on Congress Street. Many of these weekly protesters even know some of our officers by name because the officers have been committing to make sure the protesters' right to assemble, express their views, and on some occasions march are protected. When the protesters have chosen to go mobile, they've usually coordinated their plans with us so we can provide additional personnel, ensure the safest route, and minimize the overall disruption to traffic in the area, which is what the cops are there to do. During most of these past events, however, since the group protesting has simply wanted to show a presence around the federal building without moving, we've tried to keep our presence small and relatively low-key. How long is this thing? Is this a pretty long message, pal? I guess police chiefs are allowed to do that when there's a riot on their watch. Uh, 
On Thursday, February 16, 2017, the group of protesters in front of the federal building was larger than usual, and there were some new faces in the crowd. Hmm. Despite this, none of the organizers said anything to us about their plan to march or move out into the middle of Congress Street during rush hour traffic. Hmm. What had been a peaceful rally suddenly became a safety and logistical challenge as a contingent of the group decided to move off the sidewalks and into the path of traffic. Sounds like Occupy Erica and her gang of idiots. Our group of officers who had previously received kudos and praise on multiple occasions for handling much larger crowds and marches were now trying with limited success to get the protesters to leave the street and come back onto the sidewalk. Most of the crowd complied, but a very specific subgroup elected to remain in the road and challenge the directions they were given by the officers. Fuck the fuck the police faction. The policeman is my friend. These guys, when I first came to town and I was working the tunnel during the, the spring street fair, uh, a pair of bicycle cops come down there and told me to scoop up my money out of my case because they, they heard some guys in the little park over on the around the corner from the tunnel talking about taking me off. Now the cops aren't are, are not your enemy, and especially not in Tucson. It's a community uh, policing oriented town. One of the issues we intend to look at as part of our investigation and analysis of this incident is whether protesters should be allowed to assemble and remain on a busy roadway. No, they shouldn't. They're, you know, if there's going to be a march, they need to pull a permit. Otherwise, keep it on the sidewalk. That's the way it's always been. If you want to march in the street, you've got to get a fucking permit to do it. Anybody can walk on the sidewalk, but you can't block traffic. That's the way the law is written. TPD leadership will reevaluate how we want to direct staff to engage in these situations with a goal of finding gr common ground when possible. Keep it to the sidewalk and no blocking traffic or pull a permit. Simple. It's the way it's always been done. We will explore this because we have allowed groups to march in the street on various occasions in the past. Some of the factors that weighed against allowing the group to remain in the road on February 16th were the number of officers available to assure the group's safety, the lack of any prior communication or indication from the protesters that they were going to take the street, the lack of any permit for such a march, and the time of day, rush hour, including the amount of traffic on the four lanes of east and westbound traffic. We will critically review this issue and consider whether the decision to allow the group to remain in the street may, might have ultimately resulted in less confrontation between officers and the protesters and a better outcome, even if the protesters and the general public could have been endangered in the process. It is too early in our investigative process and analysis of this incident to speak with sufficient clarity or confidence about all aspects of how our officers and protesters interacted in the street. There are, however, some things we know with certainty at this time. The protesters in the street were given clear, lawful, and repeated directions by the officers that they were to leave the road and return to the sidewalks. Most of the crowd complied and returned to the sidewalks, but some of the protesters did not follow the officers' lawful directions, creating an extremely dangerous situation on a busy road. Hello, oh, where is it? There was only a small group of officers present for the first force of the incident. They were overwhelmingly outnumbered by the crowd and the number of protesters who were disregarding and in some cases opposing the officers' direction. One of the officers working to get a protester back to the sidewalk was assaulted by that protester. When the officer went to arrest this subject and place him in a patrol car for transport, he and the other officers who were assisting him were quickly surrounded by members of the crowd. Some of the crowd interfered or attempted to interfere with the law officer's lawful arrest process. 
This included attempts to come between the officer and the arrestee, getting too close to the officer so as to compromise the safety of the officers and the protesters, attempting to open doors of the uh, patrol car, locking their arms through the front of the patrol car. <coughs> <coughs> and blocking it from leaving the scene. And we don't have any fluid on my desk right now. <coughs> <coughs> Additional officers were called and began to arrive on scene. Well, that is when it gets to turn into a melee. The scene became increasingly chaotic and tensions between protesters and the officers significantly increased. Okay, he did mention it. Um, so I guess we gotta keep reading here. Hopefully my, my, my throat won't get shitty. It's it's starting to get to be pollen season and I'm a little stuffy. And when I'm stuffy then there's post nasal drip and that gets my throat fucked up. Um but you know my anti fan club is convinced it's COPD. It's something I've, <laughs> I've suffered all my life. Um it's called allergies, kids. Uh, my lungs are clear. I mean, I, I, I'm very careful about how I, how I treat my lungs, in spite of the fact that I smoke. I, I'm, I've always moderated my smoking. Um, hello, where was I? Here we go. This is where we left off. We understand and appreciate that people observe and perceive things differently. This is true for the members of the public who were present during this incident, as well as for the police officers involved. For example, there are protesters who are absolutely certain that they observed officers pushing people to the ground, striking protesters, and engaging in provocative, disrespectful conduct. Likewise, some of the police officers who were present state they were pushed and struck by protesters, illegally instructed as they enforced the law, and repeatedly provoked, including having obscenity screamed at them and being threatened. Thank you, Occupy Erica and your friends. Fucking idiots. We are aware that many people at the scene recorded video of this incident using their cell phones, that members of the news media were filming, that some officers had body cameras, and that there may be CCTV footage available. We intend to examine and analyze as much of this video footage as possible, but we also realize such video has its strength and limitations. For example, cell phone video recordings and news cameras are activated at different times during incidents of this type. And we need to get some fluid. <coughs> Bad post nasal drip today. <coughs> Mouth. Insert cough drop. Grab water. I'll be right back. Not all of the video may fully reflect the events and or actions that precipitated the conduct and reaction of the officers or the protesters. Video taken from different angles and proximities may enhance or obstruct some or even much of what actually took place. As a result, what may appear clear or obvious in some footage may look very different from another angle or distance. I'm, I'd, I'd love to see what the justification is for knocking the woman down in the street, the elderly woman in the street, uh, what exactly she was doing to deserve that, because it looked like the, the policeman came up and charged at her to knock her down, and then the other woman sprayed the woman that came 
uh, up to help her look like he had charged in to do it. And the perspective of the video that I view. Without state of the art analysis, it's not always evident to the person looking at video footage if the video was condensed, spliced, or otherwise manipulated to present a distorted impression of what actually took place. That's that's a pretty you know hefty charge. Um, sure didn't look like it to me on the one I looked at. We encourage members of the public who have video of the February 16th protest police response to share it with us so we can utilize it as part of our fact-finding and analysis associated with this incident. It is very unusual for our officers to utilize pepper spray, OC, in dealing with uh, protests or similar situations, but there are circumstances when the use of such play is lawful and appropriate. Officers have to make difficult, sometimes quick decisions about whether or not the use of O.C. spray is necessary or the best way to deal with persons who are obstructing them in their duties. Although painful, <laughs> I, 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 love, I love the language of police, uh, although painful, the effect of oleoresin capsicum exposure is temporary and is far less likely to cause injury than other methods of gaining compliance. We have received complaints about the use of pepper spray on certain individuals during the February 16th incident. Yeah, that woman. If a per protester involved in this incident has a specific complaint about how our officers use pepper spray or any other type of force on them, we want to receive and investigate these complaints. Complaints of this nature may be lodged with our Office of Professional Standards. Um, and you give a, 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 a link to it. We accept such complaints at police headquarters over the phone or through email. Complaints may also be reviewed by the Independent Police Auditor's Office. Uh, we understand that emotions run high following incidents of this kind and that people <coughs> have very strong feelings about what took place. Our department has a critical incident review board process to investigate and analyze events slash incidents of this kind so we can learn from them and continuously improve how we do our work. The CIRB looks at circumstances leading up to an incident, actions of the involved officers, the involved officers' compliance with the department general orders and other rules slash expectations, training needs, equipment issues, supervision, supervision concerns, staffing considerations, and the adequacy of department policy. If the actions of our personnel violated either the law or our general orders, those personnel may receive training, discipline, or both. Police officers, like other government employees, are entitled to due process, which includes being given the opportunity to present their side of what happened during an incident, as well as getting the chance to explain why they did what they did. We do not simply discipline or fire police officers because a group of people demand that we do so. This would go against basic principles of fairness in addition to violating the rights that these employees have with the City of Tucson through your labor agreement, civil service rules, and under state law. A little desk duty or something for them boys. I I'm sorry, you know, they both look like they charged up to those women. Um, and here are old women. I mean, come on. <sighs> Knocking an old lady down and pepper spraying the other one for trying to help her up. Mm -mm. Those two need to have something happen. I mean, you know, I understand this old rap here. But those two need to have something happen. My And, and this is, you know, just because a group of people, that's, you know, you all work for us. And the more of us say you need to work this way, the more likely it is you need to work that way. And how, and how it works. My entire management team and I are very committed to transparency and accountability associated with our work as members of the Tucson Police Department. I also appreciate that our primary role is to provide the public with high quality professional service. We derive our authority to enforce the law and carry out our duties based on the public's trust. Our officers have a challenging job. Oh boy, I get to comment if I want to. <laughs> Uh, maybe I just thought I'd leave this comment with the video. <laughs> my, 
My, I also appreciate that our primary role is to provide the public with high quality professional service like I'm getting. We'll talk about that as, for the closure. <laughs> so I get to cover the law suit. We derive our authority to enforce the law and carry out our duties based on the public trust. Well, you ain't got mine. You know, you have done a really lousy job at, at, at gaining my trust, Chief Madness. So this is this is this is this is an open this is an open this is an open 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 video. This is this is between me and you, Chris, neighbor to neighbor, <laughs> public servant to public nuisance, uh, or do a public nuisance to public servant. Our officers have a challenging job. Well, so do I. Live just living. So I appreciate your willingness to keep an open mind and extend to us your patience as we evaluate the February 16th incident. We welcome your continued feedback as we move forward, and we'll keep you informed about the outcome of our investigation. Well, as I've been saying, uh, overall, I think their response was exemplary. And I know that in other, from experience in other cities, um, there have been some heads cracked and a lot more arrests. Um, you know, I have a personal issue. Um, I've been trying to report on organized crime since I moved in here, um, starting with a heroin dealer who moved in on me next door. And instead of uh, them investigating any of my my reports, and my complaints, um, they are trying to like get me committed to court-ordered psychiatric treatment. There have been three falsified petitions. They also refuse to investigate any criminal complaints that I make. There have been three burglaries here, and the third one, I even know who did it, and they never, they never even, none of the, none of the, the detectives ever bothered to uh, contact me. Um, what they're doing uh, in response to organized cyberbullying complaints that I've been making for years is, is going to be the subject of a Title 42. Uh, section 1983 complaint just as soon as I can get it together. Um, I, I'm going to be uh, contacting um, a local civil rights attorney about it as soon as I can get my head together and put it on paper for him. Um, well, I guess that's really all I have to say, Chief Magnus. For the most part, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm proud to um, be part of the downtown community and have such I uh, good service and good relations with the with the with the cops on the beat. Um, you know, I want to. I I I I definitely want to. Uh, you know, give a give a tip of the Barney Pipe hat to John Lushbaugh, uh, Sergeant Dave Allen, and uh, Lieutenant Doggett. For sure, uh, Faith, what's her name, and uh, Shelly, uh, um, what's her name? Gosh, they're you know, I'm, I'm most of them I know by their first names. I don't even know their last names. It's nice people doing a great job, uh, but I'm getting screwed, man. Uh, I'd appreciate some actual action on the complaint that uh, Lieutenant Scott had uh, promised that if it merited uh, turning over to the FBI. Uh, they would, and uh, I've gotten admissions out of both uh, uh, Sergeant uh, Winsky and uh, Sergeant Golden that there is crime, there are crimes committed uh, being committed, but I have to take it to the FBI myself. And I keep telling you know this is what I've said to Lieutenant Scott in the first place is the FBI isn't responding to me, so I guess I have to go to the court unless the chief is going to take action, huh? Thanks for watching. Happy day. Bye.